my name is Zena Gabriel. I am a board certified dermatologist and a Mohs uh, micrographic surgeon. I have been in private practice for a little over a year, uh, but I've been a dermatologist for about 10 years. Um, one of the things I think that's so important about giving a lecture is to basically introduce myself as the kind of doctor I am because not all practices are the same, not all aesthetic practices are the same, and it took me about a decade to define who I am. And so over the last decade, I have um, basically created a practice that is 50% medical surgical. It legitimizes me as a physician, um, but I also take great interest in um, medicine and aesthetics, and I've become sort of an expert in my own right, um, you know, attending all the international conferences and basically having an aesthetic sense that's more scientific based and um, not just um, med spa-ish, which is a lot of what's been blending in the world of dermatology. I am actually speaking on behalf of Ultrashape today. That's my disclosure. I also have a disclosure with Johnson & Johnson, L'Oreal, and Neutrogena, but I will not be talking about those companies today. Um, Basically, what I want to preview for you is that there is a market potential in body shaping. The numbers don't lie. Um, I do, after a thorough research into the technology, I chose Ultrashape because of the science behind it. And I'll tell you what I mean. I'm going to go over a couple FDA and clinical trials that support the technology because we're all evidence-based doctors in here. And then I want to talk to you about um, just the fat and body shaping market in general, some business highlights, and some financial implications for your practice. Candela and joined Cineron and they now offer two basic devices. One is called UltraShape, which is a fat reduction device that uses ultrasound. I'll go over the technology. And the other one is called VelaShape. VelaShape, we've all known the first, second, third series. This is the fourth series generation. There should be a three here. The first one did not, was not called VelaShape, but VelaShape 3 is a fourth series device that now blows doors over its predecessors. Um, one of the data points I wanted to show you is that, again, um, liposuction, when you look at plastic surgeons and derms doing procedures, um, they collected that between 2013 and 2012, there was a 16% growth in liposuction and a 23% growth in non-surgical fat reduction. So body contouring devices, um, I thought this was a very interesting. If you look at gastric bands, gastric bands are pretty big time because you have to think we're in California, but there's a ton of people doing gastric bands in Kansas, Ohio, the Midwest. It's a very common procedure. Um, and so you can see on the yellow graph that represents gastric bands, it's actually quite high um, in the market value of the dollars spent for weight loss. Um, if you look at this baby blue fat reduction device, which is in the baby blue bar, it's steadily increasing. Most women that come to me ask me about, um, that ask me about this, you know, there's, unfortunately, we live in a very aesthetically driven culture. Um, the drive for perfection is gone insane. And it's really sad. And I'm hoping that the pendulum swings when my daughter's in high school. She's um, eight right now. But the bottom line is women are their own worst critics. 70% of women worry about their belly. One in three women consider more than just dieting and exercise. And 91% of women wish their body was different. So this is a very sad reality in our culture. But it's something that as doctors and as practitioners, we can help address and help people feel better about themselves. So I don't see this as exploring exploiting people's weaknesses. I see it as offering science for someone who's actually going to go out and maybe spend money on something that isn't going to be of value to them. And so my goal is to provide them with my expert advice and to give them value for something that they're going to ask you about or maybe seek elsewhere. I chose the UltraShape and VeloShape for very specific reasons. Um, VeloShape is a technology that uses three basically modes of energy. It uses radio frequency, infrared, and suction. So those three modes of energy, radio frequency, infrared, and suction, actually cause a, um, a, a vacuum-like reaction that reduces cellulite, and they do have an FDA indication for body circumferential reduction. So they have, you know, the FDA allows you to use certain words. Their claim is that they can do temporary 
fat reduction. But the main thing is it's a cellulite machine. It's a smoothing machine. It is for that rippling of tissue. It is to deliver heat in the sub-Q and the epidermis to cause constriction and tightening and break up those fibrotic bands. That is what VeloShape does. Think VeloShape cellulite smoothing. UltraShape is permanent fat cell destruction that uses ultrasound. So unlike what we all know about cool sculpting, uh, you know, cryolipolysis, um, laser lipolysis, or traditional power-assisted liposuction, UltraShape is the only FDA-approved device that uses ultra-focused ultrasound. Um, it is um, immediately and selectively destroys the fat cells. This is always a, a topic of discussion with plastic surgeons and dermatologists and anybody that's doing non-invasive fat destruction. Are you damaging the other tissue? Is it an inflammatory process? Am I um, causing um, more damage to the vessels? Is there bruising? Is there downtime? One thing about UltraShape is it selectively destroys the fat cells and you do see demonstrable results in about two weeks. So I'm gonna go over a little bit about the technical aspect of it. Um, it uses is a ceramic hand piece that's placed on the area that you want to treat and based on its acoustic energy it focuses down to one little point of ultrasound unlike an ultrasound that you do on an abdomen of a woman who's pregnant the acoustic sounds are scattered and so the um, as, as it resonates back to the transducer you can get a three-dimensional image because the acoustic energy is scattered in a field with micro-focused ultrasound, you're taking a very high energy acoustic vibration and you're taking multiple of those pulses to one single focus that causes an acoustic pressure and it lyses the cell. And because of its specific acoustic you know, energy, it only selectively destroys the fat cell. So you get this rapid change in the pressure wave that causes the adipocyte to lyse. So you avoid the endothelial cells of the blood vessels, you avoid the collagen in the tissue, you avoid the intercellular fibrotic nature of the interstitial fluid in the tissue, and all you're doing is oscillating that high pressure frequency ultrasound and causing the fat cell to, to erupt and basically lyse. So this is sort of a cartoon image of how it goes down into the sub-Q and selectively destroys the fat cells without destroying the blood vessel. The key thing about this, and this is ding, ding, ding for me, it's absolutely painless. You do not feel it. I've um, I had it done before. It feels almost like a little tickle. You don't even know it's happening. So um, it is... Uh, the energy that's focused is at 1.5 centimeters in depth, so it is at the deeper layer of the sub-Q. And, and the analogy that I give, you might have heard this if this has ever been introduced to you before, but basically imagine all the little plastic balls at McDonald's when a child jumps into the balls, all those displace, and that volume that was, um, you know, by the body, the volume is displaced, and then the ball sort of, you know, re-equilibrate into the space. So if I remove that bottom layer of adipocytes, and that pulls out, now the fat goes, Nyeh, and so, Nyeh. Yeah, so you're basically shaving off that bottom layer of fat, you're preserving the blood vessels and all the tissue, you're not causing inflammation, there's no pain during, before, after at all, there's no inflammatory process, all that's happening is you're lysing a cell. The contents of the adipocyte are not pro-inflammatory. Unlike blood, we know that heme, whenever you, know, you, you stick a needle in someone's face and you cause an ecchymosis or a bruise, blood is an irritant, blood hurts. That's why when you touch a bruise, it hurts. When you lyse a fat cell, it does not hurt. There's no inflammatory process that recurs. There's no um, leukotriene inhibitor, you know, leukotriene cytokines that are um, attracted to that cell lysis. So there's no inflammation. This is a picture that just shows you that it is a single focus of acoustic energy that is at a depth of 1.5 millimeters. So you are hitting the sub-Q. This is an example to show you that the um, fat cell, what it looks like, it's actually being destroyed and it's showing that the blood vessel is intact so you have no inflammation or heme in the area. And this is a porcine model that's actually showing what it looks like when you're actually destroying the um, lipo, like the adipocyte and the lipolysis of the fat cells so you get these cavitations. 
Um, and then again, it's showing a, an acute treatment where you see the um, first, second, and third treatment, and then postoperatively at two weeks, and then four weeks, there's no inflammation. The holes in the fat lead to the collapse of the fat layer above, and you get basically shrinkage of the fat. So the benefits of, of Ultra Shape, you know, from the company's point of view is that it's focused, it's only destroying fat cells, it's pulsed, so it's not a thermal effect, it's acoustic pressure, so there's no heat, pain, or temperature involved, and it's selective, okay? I love this as part of the reason why I chose Ultra Shape versus Cool Sculpting in my practice. Um, the main two reasons I did was because I felt Cool Sculpting was a commodity you can get at any Tom, Dick, and Harry shop. And I wanted to be different and I wanted it to be customizable. I didn't want it to be plug and chug. One of the things I loved about the technology when, when I got my hands on it was I felt that I could, I could massage it. I could play with it. I could take, you know, like a lot of women after they have their ch children, they have maybe a little bit more fat pocket here than here. So instead of like a big old device from Cool Sculpting that just melts uniformly around the abdominal panis, I could do a little bit more over here and a little bit less over here. In fact, I could do a little bit more right here at the flank instead of right here so I could cut your waistline. So I felt like I could really body shape. It wasn't just plug, melt, and you know, have, have just like a bulk area that was destroyed. So um, the size and shape of the treatment area can be fully customizable. Um, it also ensures complete and uniform coverage. One of the very rare complications with cool sculpting is that you can have a shelf. And you know, all of us have heard about it, all of us may or not have seen it, and it's always something that you have to address with your patients. This is smooth, uniform, homogenous, there's no irregularities. It's, it's like a little, those little balls at McDonald's, it all evens out. And um, there's no, it's, your, your treatment area is not limited by the handpiece. That's something uh, differentiating itself from cool sculpting as well. You move the wand anywhere you want. We've done submental, we've done, um, you know, uh, a post arm area, the bra fat area, and it, it's, it doesn't matter what the transducer is doing, you can do it there. It does have a 3D treatment mapping and guidance system that allows you, it's sort of a monkey could do it, there's really no thinking involved. So even though it's customizable, it, you know, it lays, you say this is the area I wanna treat and it lays out all the dots and it's like a video game. Beep, 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 beep. It's a class two device. In my office I have my esthetician do it and my nurses. So it's 100% delegatable, which I like. Um, again, the treatment advantage, I think it's a selective fat cell destruction. Um, it does have clinically documented reduction of two to three centimeters of circumferential reduction. Everybody who gets something cleared by the FDA has to give a number. Everything has to be objectified. So how much, how little, what amount? I mean, everybody sits there and measures in this and that. You know what I tell people? You'll lose two dress sizes with one treatment. Now one treatment is three procedures. One treatment is three procedures. Expectations are one of the most important reasons we're successful as aesthetic physicians. You have to set expectations. I mean, I mean, I've learned this in day one, you know, aesthetic class 101. You have to set expectations. You wanna over deliver and under promise, always. It's hard to do, but you gotta do it because you're trying to get the sale, you're trying to get the person to sign up. And I always tell people, if you want a three centimeter reduction around your waist, two inches I say, say two inches, you need to have three procedures. That's one treatment. Um, just comparatively, uh, this is just to show you the difference between it's non-inflammatory, this is the acute phase of ultrasound, this is liposonics, which is thermal necrosis, and freeze thaw necrosis, and you can see in the histology there's inflammation in both cool sculpting and liposonics, but no inflammation at four weeks with ultra shape. Um, the mechanism of action, we all know this. I don't want to belabor you with it. The bottom line is a uh, key thing is that there is absolutely no pain and no bruising and no sequela to the, uh, to the actual procedure. They walk away, they don't see anything. They don't feel anything, they don't see anything. So um, with cool sculpting, you can get bruising, soreness, and you definitely get numbness. And one of the key things is, you know, I think cool sculpting is fantastic. I think it works. I just don't want those phone calls. I'm a young mom with two kids. I want to be at my work, give 150%. But you know what? When I leave work, I don't want a phone call. That's why I chose dermatology and not plastic surgery. 
I don't want to get a phone call at the end of the night saying, what am I going to do about this bruising? I'm putting my dress on and I feel the inflammation. So um, bruising and soreness is something that I, I wanted to not eliminate from, um, from my, the repertoire of my patient's complaints. Um, it's also important to know the um, time to visible results. Everybody wants quick and dirty results. We live in a society where we want everything right now. People don't want to wait. How long? I mean, for those of you that do Sculptra, I absolutely love Sculptra as a product. The problem is, is that Sculptra takes time to work. And you got to hold their hand and you got to talk to them. You got to counsel them. Well, one of the things with UltraShape is you can see reduction fairly quickly. So it's not this two month process. It doesn't take the patient a long time to be happy. So even after one treatment, I say, I, this is what I tell people. I'm telling you guys, after one treatment, you will see a result. But I don't say that to my patients. I set better expectations. I say, I don't want to hear a word from your mouth unless we've done your second treatment. Don't, let's not talk about, does it work? Did it work? Am I smaller? Let's measure you. I say, I'm not measuring you until we've done your second treatment. So you set good expectations and then you get the results. And um, with cool sculpting, it does take a few months to get that cryolipolysis, that inflammation to destroy the adipocyte. And liposonics we know take several months. But with UltraShape, you can get results up into about two weeks. The clinical evidence, you know, Candela and Cineron is a huge company. They have a lot of money to pay people to do these studies. They have more than 20% clinical um, studies published, and there's, you know, 220,000 patients have been treated worldwide. This is one of my favorite studies. It was three sites in the U.S. The bottom line is there's a 3.4 centimeter reduction in the patients that were treated with UltraShape compared to 0.5 centimeter reduction in the control. So the bottom line is the clinical trials support the device. This is an example of some of the, um, the, the results in the study. You can see that they're very, very statistically significant. These are not lightweight studies. You have 82%, 0.5% circumferential reduction, 93% patient satisfaction, 100% measurable reduction, 86% satisfaction. So these aren't just average results. Um, as, as a physician, we like to see data. We like, I love to see histology as a, der, as a dermatologist. Um, this is an awesome study um, done at, in, in a university in um, Taiwan that basically showed there is um, visible reduction in the subcutaneous thickness in circumferential reduction on CT scans. So they were able to actually show there's a 25% reduction in the MRI fat thickness of the upper abdomen and 21% reduction in lower abdomen. I love this study. So this is a woman who's pre and post. There's no shelving. She was only treated in the upper and lower abdomen. And she got a four and a half centimeter reduction in the upper abdomen and a five and a half centimeter reduction in the lower abdomen. The key thing about this picture is she really didn't lose her ass. You know, it's not like she lost a ton of weight. You know, you have to understand that when you do a procedure on someone and you're doing either cool sculpting or some kind of fat reduction device, that motivates the person to start eating better. That motivates the person to look weight. They're putting on sexier clothes. They're, they might not go for that chocolate cake at night. So there's a little bit of a cultural thing that happens within the patient. And, you know, one of the, a lot of times these companies will present these images and I'll look at the images. I said, yeah, okay, I see that that person lost their abdomen, but oh my God, their whole body is so much skinnier. So it's not monotherapy. You know, one of the things we always look at as, as, you know, as clinicians is you want to know, did the intervention produce the outcome? Because, I mean, I could go and lose weight and then take a picture, and maybe it was the weight that I lost that produced the photo. But it's the, it's the intervention that produced the outcome. And this picture I love because she still has her little cute little butt. So I'll go through a couple photos. This is a photo where um, she lost five centimeters in, in circumferential reduction. And this was only one month after her second treatment. So she hasn't even completed her series. This is a gentleman who we did on the flanks, two months post-treatment. He lost 14 centimeters, but he basically starved himself. So I, I'm not going to lie there. The guy like went on a major diet. But he is so happy about his little muffin tops. Here's another abdomen, no shelving, just the whole little area shrinks. So I always tell people, I can turn your turkey into a chicken, but I can't get rid of your chicken. 
You, you got to work on the chicken. You, I can't make you a six pack. Okay, I'm not vaser. I'm not going in and sculpting your little adipocytes. Okay. So this is another one, three centimeter reduction. Um, one of the things I wanted to come back around, remember I mentioned to you that I, I bought both the devices, the ultra shape and the velo shape. I think that um, smoothing the skin is a critical component um, to basically fat reduction. Because I think once you remove that fat, and, and, and a lot, I don't know for those of you that do surgeries out there, when you get a big lipoma or you get a large cyst that's in the tissue and you remove that, the, the tissue tends to crepe over that volume loss. And you almost have to tighten up that tissue by taking a little bit of the epidermis off. So same with, um, with fat. I mean, when you remove the fat, the tissue that's been stretched from it needs to be tightened. And I absolutely love the Velo Shape. As I mentioned, it is now considered the gold standard for cellulite reduction. Um, it does have FDA clearance for temporary fat reduction, but I don't even mention that to my patients. I um, developed a procedure in my office, I call it the Oreo cookie. And I say, we're going to do 15 minutes of velo shape over your abdomen, for example, where I, I smooth the velo shape over your abdomen. I suck it up into the vacuum. I infrared heat it. And basically, I'm, I'm making the adipocytes fragile. And that's, that's sort of the concept I'm thinking. I'm making them fragile because I want to weaken them. And then I go over it with the ultra shape, and I give a one-hour procedure of the ultra shape. And then I do another five minutes of velo shape right after to just stimulate the, um, the circulation and get all that the juices flowing from the adipocytes that just lysed. So when I do this, I get a King Kong reaction. Ultra shape alone works, velo shape alone works, but when you combine them, you get the greater sum of its parts. So there is a synergy between the two. I almost always do both for fat reduction. Velo shape alone creates big results. So I use VeloShape, um, like I tell people, how often do you need it? Is it permanent? The bottom line with VeloShape is I say, look, you're going on a cruise with your husband, you wanna be in your sexy bikini, let's do a couple VeloShape procedures, you know, I'm not gonna give you the, the five-star body, but you know what? You're gonna be smoother on your cruise, you're gonna be happier. In six months, when you go to the Caribbean in the wintertime, we'll do it again. And so it's sort of like a sick, every six month deal, depending on if the patient's really interested in looking good. You know, before a wedding, it's awesome. So I do Velo Shape alone for smoothing, for before vacations, for that, you know, that special event where the woman doesn't want to be in their bathing suit. But when someone needs to reduce fat, someone wants to bulk down, I do the Vela Ultra Vela combo. That's my Oreo cookie. And you can see how loose the skin is going to be when I melt this fat. It's going to be loose, but with the Vela combination and the Ultra, I can get rid of the fat as well as tighten the tissue. This is another one where I think this is cheating because I think this patient lost weight. So let's, let's be honest here. She probably lost weight, but her abdomen looks awesome, and I think the Vela and Ultra help that. Here's another one. Again, this is a woman who <clears throat> basically got about a five and a half centimeter reduction. So pictures speak for themselves. This is somebody else who I could customize it. I knew that she had a little bit more fat on this side, not as much fat over here. So she needed tightening right here in this corner, but she needed fat reduction right here. Cool sculpting would have made this a thousand times crepier. But I could lice the cells there, tighten there, and I was able to make it customized. Another picture, really good. I like this because it shows the flanks have not really improved. I did not treat that area, but treating the upper and lower abdomen, she's definitely smaller, and she's thrilled with the result. She never called me. She never had pain. She could go work out that next day. So I do think that it is a valuable thing to add to your practice. I think that it's easy to learn and use. It, it's not technique dependent like fillers and Botox and some of the lasers are. It's sort of a monkey could do it. You do need to have some clinical acumen in terms of the areas that need to be treated. But as far as producing, you know, running the devices, 
you can't wor- you, you don't have to worry that somebody's going to hurt a patient. And, and that's something that's very important to me. Um, I also think that new technology provides clinical differentiation. Like I said, in my area of Newport Beach, it's a shark tank. Everybody has the same devices. Everybody knows how to skin the cat. Everybody's doing the same thing. I wanted to have something to differentiate myself. Um, I do think that with all procedures that require a patient to sit still, I don't care if it's you know photodynamic therapy, which I do a lot, where they have to incubate in the blue light, or it's... Um, ultra shape or any procedure, like even when patients are numbing during filler procedures, I I spend a lot of time cross-selling, educating, and getting the patient to become educated about what my practice offers. And then as far as the numbers, this, I actually adjusted this. I think 15 treatments per month is very, very realistic. I think that is about three procedures a week. And if you're open five to six days a week, that's very realistic. And each procedure, is $1,200, that's my price for my procedure. But like I said, one, excuse me, one treatment is $1,200, one procedure is three treatments. So I wanna clarify that. In order to get the results that I just showed, it requires three procedures, which I tell a patient, you need three procedures, you're not gonna get the results. No one comes in for a one-stop shop, it's always three. So you're buying one, per, you're buying one um, procedure, but it's, excuse me, arriving on treatment, but it involves three procedures. So this is uh, about a $200,000 revenue stream for your practice if you can um, make it work. The reason I made this decision is because first and foremost, uh, I had, I, I saw that it worked. I believed in the clinical results. I saw it firsthand myself. I liked that it differentiated my services. I thought it was customizable. It's not a plug and chug. That's not the way I run my practice. We all have different models of our business, but for my practice, it's a very Neiman Marcus level environment. It's not, oh, you can get Botox here for $8. Uh Uh-uh. This is, this is, we're doing your Botox a little different. We're doing your fillers a little different. You're going to walk out of here not looking like you've been done. This isn't your average med spa. That's my business model. That doesn't have to be everybody's business model. But in my mind, I thought a customizable device was more appropriate for my clientele in the way that I run my practice. I didn't want a plug and chug system. And of course, uh, Candela and Cineron have been jumping on the bandwagon like everybody else. They create these devices where it's the, um, the, the Gillette razor model. They make you buy the box, but they make you purchase a consumable. And in some ways, it's sort of like those bastards, I can't believe they're all, you know, everyone's out. But you have to understand, it's all about Wall Street. It's all about having the company that has recurring revenue streams for the company in order for investors to invest in the company. So everybody's adopting the Gillette Razor model. They're not just dumping a box in your office and taking off. That's the way we were treated with IPLs and V-beams and different devices in the past. They just, they, you bought a Cadillac and they said goodbye. Now you buy their Cadillac, but they come back every month and make sure you're doing good because if you're doing good, they're doing good. So I really like the model of the company support and they've, they've invested a lot of money in the people out in the field and they're not just leaving you hanging dry. Um, for me though, honestly, the main reason I did this uh, in, in my office is like I said, as a young woman, I'm constantly asked about new technologies. What should I do, doctor? And I had to become an expert. I felt people were constantly asking me about body shaping and I had to learn about it. And after my analysis, I realized that I wanted a no pain and truly zero downtime. So many of us say, oh, it's no downtime, it's no downtime. Honestly, this is a no downtime procedure and I don't get phone calls. So for me, it was sort of a no brainer. Um, This is a very uh, early product. It was launched commercially in May of 2014. So the device is, you know, fairly new in the market. It's gaining steam. It's um, getting more uh, more uh, direct consumer marketing out there. People are asking me about it before I have to introduce it to them. And if you're interested, they do have a booth here and they'll certainly help you with that. If you have any questions for me, you can um, email me. I'm at Zena at drzena.com. And um, if you have any questions for me regarding anything else, I'd be happy to answer it. Thank you for your attention. Michael? Any final questions for Dr. Gabrielle? Yes, we have a question. The consumable device is actually like a microchip. It's a, um, it's a, it's called a focal zone. And when you, 
when you're mapping out an area that needs to be treated, the uh, area that needs to be treated is based on size. And depending on the size of the treatment, it'll cost you as a practitioner, let's say $200 to treat an abdomen. And you have a little, it's sort of like the Dave and Buster's cards for video games. You'll have like a, a, a card that's worth, let's say, $1,000. And so you put that card into the machine, and when you do a $200 thing, it removes $200 from your card. So um, it, it, it's a chip, and um, that's basically how it works. So you're, it's not a tangible item that you have to stock in your office. It's not um, something that you have to purchase. It's just basically purchasing tokens. You purchase tokens, you use up the tokens, and it removes it. And on average, the consumable for each um, procedure is anywhere between, I would say, $130 to $400, depending on where, what you're doing. So similar, unlike the Fraxel tips, it's not something that you can touch. It's, some, it's tokens. So that's how the company makes their money. They're selling you energy.